Welcome. My name is Manesh Patel. I'm the Chief Technology Officer of Regnosis. And um, today, you might have seen that at the beginning, we are proud members of Finos as of um, last week. So um, that's good. So a couple months ago, a uh, multi-organization, multi-location team came together to attempt something ambitious. It would help if I put the slide up. So um, Finos helped bring together Morgan Stanley, Microsoft, and Regnosis together, where we hacked around the clock um, over four different regions, um, four different time zones, in its first of a kind um, tech sprint. So the tech sprint looked to demonstrate how financial institutions can comply with trade processing um, for the upcoming US CFTC uh, requirements using entirely open source components, all within three days. Given the time zone differences, the tech sprint was held virtually. Um, we started off in the UK Ghana shift, and uh, we ended up in the, in the West Coast shift. So it was literally around the clock, uh, there's code being um, submitted. Um, everything was um, done on Finos GitLab, so all, all the code is there. So if you just Google um, Finos Labs, um, there's a Morpha, Regnosis Tech Sprint, all the source code is there. And it was pretty, it was, it was, it was a sprint. So why is this important? So every year, the financial industry spends billions trying to comply with complex data requirements. For every reporting regime and jurisdiction, firms must sift through hundreds and hundreds of pages of legal text. Then they have to manually interpret that, and then they have to code that into their IT systems. As a result, as a result while many financial institutions share the same reporting requirements, they usually implement their logic slightly differently. And this, this forms fragmented technology, and that adds risk and cost. So the field is ripe for um, a shakeup by RegTech, the application of regulatory technology, um, for technology to address regulatory challenges. So the ability to build, execute, and validate the reporting logic in an open source and technology agnostic way could be huge for the industry. Um, and that's what we achieved as part of this tech sprint. Let's have a look at the components. All right, so the first component is what we call digital regulatory reporting. So the industry is getting better organized at tackling this. Digital regulatory reporting, DRR, is a program that mutualizes, that mutualizes um, the cost and risk of, of this. It's an industry-wide initiative to address the global trade reporting requirements. Currently, there is um, a task force of multiple banks that are working on this right now, and they're due to complete um, the US CFTC regulation, which is due by the end of the year. So this is happening. This is live. This is, this is going to be live at the end of the year. And beyond that, it's going to scale to the entire G20. So this program is, is, is geared towards production. It's happening. So um, the DRI involves industry participants working together to deliver an open source functional expression of the rules. So the DR rules are expressed in a domain specific language called the Rosetta DSL. It's translated into code through an automatic process called code generation. What you're seeing on screen right now is the Rosetta platform doing just that. You have some code, and then you can run, run it and then produce some output. So the Rosetta DSL and associated code generators are currently being pro, um, processed um, for contribution to Finos. Uh, so those are the two open source uh, projects developed by Regnosis, which are being um, used by D the DR program. So on top of that, op the open source uh, components Rosetta provides a low-code collaborative platform allowing institutions to comply to regulations in a safer, cheaper, and faster way, all in the open source. It's safer because industry standardizes the rule interpretation and codifies it. It's cheaper as the industry collaborates together to divide up the effort. And it's faster as we can automate integration into our IT systems. Now, that last point is all about uh, what this text print was about, integration into firm system. So we've got the industry together, we're building the rules, and this text print is about 
how we can integrate this into the um, firm systems using only open source components. Okay, so that brings us to Morpha. Morpha is a technology um, as part of Finos, um, and I'll let um, Stephen explain more. Hi, this is Stephen Goldbaum from the Morpha Project. I'm here to give some background into how Morpha fits into this collaborative effort. Morpha is a part of the Finos ecosystem and was contributed by Morgan Stanley in 2020. The project's goal is to provide a common way to share business logic. In doing so, we hope to improve the interoperability and agility across the industry. Quarter sharing business logic is being able to save it into a common format that can be shared across teams and technologies. Morpha does this with what's known as an intermediate representation, or IR. Having business logic saved in this format allows teams to write tools to do useful things with it. This could include interactive UIs to help users understand what an application is doing, or writing translators to execute the business logic in a variety of different technologies. This could be compelling for something like digital regulations where the goal is to deliver regulations as code that can still be executed in a variety of technologies that exist across the industry. A major component of dealing with business logic is writing it. In various meetings with FinOS, we recognize an opportunity to combine Rosetta's advanced rule authoring capabilities with the features of Morpher. By compiling Rosetta into Morpher's IR, we'd be able to take advantage of the best of both technologies. This was the basis for our collaborative effort. Okay, so this was an international hackathon and Stephen couldn't be here in person and we decided against doing video conferences, so we recorded everything. So, um, all right, so, you know, so far what we've seen is industries come together to create the DRR program with digitizing regulations. You've heard that those digitized regulations can be represented as business logic in Rosetta. And we've seen that Morpha is an open source Finos project where those digital business rules can be executed. So um, now you've got, at the output of Morpha, you've got code. So how can you trust, to, how can you trust the code? And that's where um, Bosky comes in. It's a project from Microsoft Research and it already integrates with Morpha. And I'll let, you, let Mark for Microsoft tell you the rest. The Bosky programming language and tooling stack are a project out of Microsoft Research focused on the problem of simplifying building high assurance software using formal methods and automated reasoning. This is in contrast to the current state of the art for high assurance software development, which is heavily focused on manual processes and workflows to generate quality software. So instead of depending on uh, software development checklists, code review uh, criteria, unit test coverage, writing large test suites, and this sort of thing, we want to introduce an automated tuning suite that will allow us to automatically reason about all possible errors in your software. We will send that exist to automatically generate failing inputs to prove that certain errors can exist or at least identify cases or whole sets of the state space where these errors are impossible. The Lubosky language is the first part of this project, and it's a functional language that has an interesting block structure and local variable reassignment setup. This language is designed to be very approachable from someone coming from a Java or C Sharp or TypeScript background, where you have functions and integers, you can declare local variables, have control flow blocks that reassign the variables, and other sort of similar computations. So in this case, we have a simple calculator that's doing some adds value and sign computations. Built into the language, we provide a testing framework. So you can write classic tests like you would write today, uh, unit tests that take no parameters, call a function with a concrete value, and just check that the result um, satisfies uh, the specified property. The Bosky programming tooling stack also supports what are known as property-based uh, tests. So I might assert that for all x, if x is less than 0, then calling the sign will return negative 1. Now, existing property-based testing tools often use what are called fuzzy methods, or just randomly generate various concrete inputs to find a counterexample for this test to fail. Bosky actually supports uh, new uh, extensions to the Z3 symbolic 
prover that was developed here at Microsoft Research that allow us to prove not only for some set of concrete values or some hand-selected set of inputs that we had coded in unit tests, but to prove that for all possible integers, um, this test or this implementation always satisfies the condition specified by this test, or uh, if it fails, to generate a concrete input. So let's take a look here where we require that if x is greater than 0, the sign is uh, 1. Now, if we go and look at our calc implementation, we see that we actually have a minor case where the R is equal to 0, that the test we properly specify and the implementation diverge. So let's see how that looks by running our testing framework on this set of unit tests. You'll see that it actually can prove that for all of the negative uh, values, there is no possible input that violates the property specified in our test. But for the positive value, it quickly finds the zero uh, candidate value that will cause that assertion to fail and violate our condition. And of course, this works without requiring you to write any unit test beyond just that one symbolic property test. The nice thing about the Bosky reasoning uh, framework is it allows us to check not just properties that you specify in unit tests, but also to go and look at the entire application and find lots of common errors like division by zero or underflow on unsigned arithmetic or out of bounds access. So we can run this checker on the application entirely to find any possible runtime error that would occur. And if we look at our simple application, it checks for three possible errors and it finds that none of them can occur on any input and reports this result as such. So this is a really exciting possibility uh, for us as far as making the construction of high assurance software very simple and very natural for today's developers. But it also turns out that the fintech space is an area where there's a lot of interest in high assurance software and being able to demonstrate uh, concretely why a given piece of software, why we have confidence in a given piece of software. And that's why it was really exciting to work with our partners at Morgan Stanley and Magnosis on this hackathon to hook up some of the financial software that they're building to our checker backend to allow them to take advantage of this machinery that we've built. Okay, so that last part is the most important. It's about checking the software. So what we've seen so far are the different components. You have digital directory reporting, you represent your logic. You have Rosetta, where the logic is digitized. You have uh, Morpha, where that digitized logic is made executable. And then once you have executable logic, you don't actually have to write the Bosky. The Bosky automatically, the testing framework, tells you whether it's right or wrong. It shows you all the inputs that you could possibly give that will break it. So now you have trust software that you can trust. OK, so bringing it all together. So digital registry reporting is written using the Rosetta platform. So those two work together. Morpha being an open source FinOS project, already works with Bosky. So um, they, the two, two projects have already integrated together. So uh, the main objective of this tech sprint was to develop a Rosetta to Morpha code generator. This would de demonstrate that Morpha can be used to execute the rules represented in DRR that the industry is currently writing. So the tech sprint focused on two rules. So these are real rules as part of the CFTC uh, deliverable fields by the end of the year. Um, there were the trade date and event timestamps. So we built a prototype that you could upload data in the, in the format that is represented in DRR and execute the rules against Morpha and produce output and then put it in a tabular format. So everything was done automatically. The hard part was writing the Rosetta to Morpha code generator and once that component was ready, the entire executable platform was generated within seconds. So you know, it was a really good plan. It came together really well. And all of this was done within just a few days. So the prototype proves that the digital regulations that are represented in, in the um, Rosetta DSL as part of the DRR program can be executed with Morpha. And then the code assurance can be run using Bosky. So, now all these components fit together, there's another advantage. We can make use of all the integrations that come with, for example, Morpha, because the, it's all in the open source. So Attila now 
it's going to tell us about some of the tools that you can uh, use as part of Morpher. Hi, my name is Atkala Mihai. I'm a co-creator of Morpher, and I'm here to give you a little demonstration of the various tools that we used during this tech sprint. So, as Mina already mentioned, um, the Regnosis team started by creating a transpiler uh, that takes Rosetta source files and produces ELM source files. So the next thing we did was used our Morpher ELM make command to turn those ELM sources into the Morpher IR. Uh, the Morpher IR is a language independent representation uh, of the domain model and business logic. And we store that uh, store it in a JSON format. Um, and it's the central integration point for the Morpher platform. All the tools either produce Morpher IR or consume Morpher IR. Um, so at this point, since we have the IR, we could turn that into any execution technology that we support, for example, uh, running in Scala um, or TypeScript. Um, but um, we have this unique capability where we can um, test our business logic and make sure that it does what we expect even before we decide on the final execution environment. Um, so we have a tool uh, specifically to support that called Morpher Elm Develop. So let me run that right now. That starts up a web server um, that serves a web UI that looks like this. Um, it allows you to browse uh, the IR. It shows you a graph of the various types and functions. Um, but if you want to test a specific function, you can select that in the, this tree here. Let me just make it bigger and, and show you what it, uh, what it does. So it, it basically, just by looking at the IR, it figured out all the, the inputs for the function. Uh, it, it, is, it knows exactly what are the possible inputs uh, and it, I could start typing them in but instead of doing that I'll just go with a previously saved test case. So I clicked on it and the editors got immediately populated and what's exciting is that it, it also uh, highlighted the execution path in this decision tree. Um, so not only that you see um, the, the actual output that was, uh, was produced by you for these inputs, but you can also see how the execution flowed through, which, um, which is really useful for a business user to understand if the business logic behaves as expected. And what's important is that um, this is actually how it will be executed in the system. This is not just some visualization that somebody created. Uh, this was auto generated from the actual specification of the business logic. Um, and of course you can play around with it. Uh, if, you, if you choose a different input, um, you can see if it, that, that follows the path that is expected. And if it is, then you can save it as a test case and then build up a whole test suite uh, of various test cases. And then of course you can integrate this into your build pipeline as well. So, once you're satisfied with the business logic, um, you can actually go back and run one of our backends, one of code generators. So let me do that right now. So you can see that it generated a bunch of Scala files. It did Scala because uh, our default one is Scala if you don't specify what language you want. Um, and so now you're ready to integrate um, your validated business logic into the system that yeah you want to integrate into it um, and that's it thank you okay so um takeaways and next steps so one of the most imp most interesting takeaways from tech sprint was its task force format so i didn't really know a lot of people from the from the hackathon we came together and within just three days you know, we, we all became friends and we, we collaborated together and produced something that we never thought, uh, well, we, we didn't have at the, at the beginning. So this could serve as a blueprint for Finos um, to serve innovation. So collaboration enabled in, in, uh, innovation. The technologies and teams work together and prove that the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. The Rosetta to Morpher co-generator delivered during the tech sprint 
is going to be included in the formal open source contribution to Finos. So this is all going to um, make its way into production code. And finally, this will create the first bridge between the ongoing DRI industry program and the wider Finos community. So you may have heard the, that the special interest special uh, there's a SIG, special interest group for innovation for regulation that is part of Finos. Um, so this will bridge a gap between that group and what's going on in the wider community. We did a small part of the regulation. We only had three days to do it, but now is 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 the next part. So we're going to take that. And we're going to scale it up to the whole thing. So at, by the end of the year, what we, what we plan to have uh, with Morpha is an end-to-end -end solution where you can take the digital rules and execute it all the way through using the Morpha platform. The potential benefits for open collaboration in the registry space are massive. And this textbook demonstrates how um, new ground can be broken when the barriers are taken down. Um, and here's some final words from Mark from Microsoft. This hackathon was a lot of fun for me personally because I got to work with two great companies and teams literally could distribute it around the world. And we saw this proof of concept come together very quickly that I think did a great job of illustrating the potential value that automated software validation could have in the financial services industry. It also really inspired me to continue working on this core vision of Bosky around high assurance software development, but also illustrated the value of collaborating in open source and the ability to build a community there. And I'd really like to continue to collaborate uh, with the entire fintech industry in that space and hopefully bring some really exciting technology uh, to general availability. Cool. So, um, yeah, so that, that's what it was. This, this, uh, this hackathon, this tech sprint, was building collaboration between three different technologies that had never worked together before and um, producing an end-to-end -end very quickly and um, making a blueprint so that we can take this, scale it forward, and actually create a full open source solution. Thank you. Any questions? No? Okay, well, I'm available, um, so I'll be, I'll be around. Please come grab me if you want to learn more. Uh, all the source code that we developed is all on GitHub. Um, it's on Finos Labs, and um, it will shortly be part of Finos, hopefully, fingers crossed, once the contribution goes through. Um, so, yeah, thank you very much. Oh, go on. Um, how much are the regulators Okay, so um, the digital registry reporting program is a consortium of uh, pretty much most of the, the large banking institutions. They've come together under the ISDA banner. So um, ISDA brought them together, but then that's uh, expanded out to um, ISLA and ICMA as well, so the trade associations. And um, they're chairing the, the group, of a group of banks that are digitizing. So every week, um, there's meetings and there's a governance layer. They're all digitizing it using um, Rosetta in order to create the digitized um, regulations. The regulators themselves are observing this very closely. Um, as you know, regulators don't tend to bless implementations. That's not what they do yet. Um, but um, the idea is if we create open standards, show collaboration, then and, introduce, and get the, um, the regulators to the table, then one day I, I believe the two things will, will meet up. So, but they're very much aware of what's going on. So yeah, we've, we've worked with um, a number of regulators um, and every regulator sees a ton of value in this. So um, yeah, they're, wa they're watching this very closely um, and the main takeaway is that it's the actual industry is coming together and building the rules. So there's two models, either, 
either the regulators mandate to everyone, here's how to do it, it's not going to happen, or the industry comes together and creates an open standard, and then the um, regulators, rather than adopt it, they accept it. Um, so gives a gives a nod to it, and that's what's happening right now. And uh, the rules right three minutes. The rules right now are, like I said, um, the CFTC part, um, CFTC regulations are is a new regulation coming online at the end of the year for for the US. Um, that's expanding to the G20. So um, we estimate there's going to be over 100 reports over the next three or four years that are digitized in this manner. Okay. Great. Thank you very much.